Brent Venables is hopeful for Danny Stutzman's return in Bedlam with what could be the last Bedlam for quite some time. We'll talk about that and so much more on today's episode of Locked On Sooners. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Sooner Nation? Welcome to Locked On Sooners. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit, visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Thank you for joining me. My name is John Williams. You can follow me on Twitter at John9Williams. Not with me today is Josh Elmer. Uh, when we record this, it's usually late at night. He had some other obligations that he had to take care of, but happy to be here with you to talk Oklahoma football, get you ready for Bedlam. And the first thing that is on everybody's mind is what is up with Danny Stutzman. Danny Stutzman went out in the first half of the game against Kansas, came back in for a play in the second half, immediately left after that. And, you know, according to Brent Venables, he's hopeful that the, that Stutzman is going to be okay. He says he feels good. Stutzman feels good, that is. And it's going to be possibly a game time decision come Saturday at 2.30 when Oklahoma gets set to play Oklahoma State. And it's going to be key. That's going to be a critical injury to watch throughout the week because you need every bit of your defensive uh, front seven available to you to slow down Ollie Gordon. And, I mean, Danny Stutzman, he's been your best, most consistent player all year long. And there's a reason why he's been so successful because he's got a great grasp of the Brent Venables defense and he's just playing with great aggression, with great understanding. He's been able to get into the backfield quite a bit and he's doing a a lot pre-snap to get everybody in the right alignment. And then post-snap, he's consistently doing his job, getting into the gaps that he needs to get into. And that's what it takes against a really, really good running game like the Oklahoma State Cowboys have. It takes a team effort to get there and having your best player available to you on defense is going to make that so much easier. So Danny Setzman, the injury to watch this week, we're going to keep a close eye on it. Brent Venables also spoke on Tawi Walker in his weekly media availability saying, Hey, another guy that they think they'll get back. Hopefully again, you want to have your best players available to you. It's clear at this point that Tawi Walker is the best option for the Oklahoma Sooners running game. There are some talented guys. Gavin Sawchuk's got talent. Javante Barnes has got talent. I know y'all don't want to hear me say it, but I think that Marcus Major has got some talent to you for, for this team. But for what this team needs right now in 2023, Tawi Walker is the best option for this team moving forward. And hopefully – Whatever ailed him, his ankle uh, is is ready to go, that he is you know, healed up enough to be able to wrap it up and, and put him out there and, and see if you can get uh, another big game out of him because you're going to need it. We went through some of the numbers yesterday on the show, but again, Oklahoma's facing a, a defense that hasn't been very good statistically, either against the run or the pass. So there's an opportunity for Oklahoma to get back on track in both areas. I mean, Tommy Walker was great for the time that he was in, but when he wasn't in the game, the Oklahoma Sooners run game struggled. And we saw what the passing game was unable to do at times because of the inclement weather or the unwillingness of the offensive coordinator to call plays to get the ball in Dylan Gabriel's hands. But getting Tommy Walker back would be tremendous for this game. And then we all already spoke on Gentry Williams, but Venables mentioned him again, that he's practicing going to be back for this game. Uh, He was named a captain for the game. So I think that that is a bit of an indication that Gentry Williams is good to go, that he's going to be ready to roll. And again, you need him. When everything's going to be focused on the run, you need your best cover players out there to make sure that they're not able to beat you with some play action pass over the top uh, as the rest of the defense is focusing on, on stopping Ollie Gordon, because that's going to be, you know, the key, the key element to this matchup is slowing down Ollie Gordon. If you can't get, 
Alan Bowman into some second and third and long situations on a regular basis, it's going to be really, really hard to slow down the Oklahoma State offense. But this team has been really, really good against the run. Uh, yeah, they've had some moments where they've given up big plays, whether it was Kansas or against uh, UCF. They've had moments where they've given up big plays, but for the most part, they've looked pretty solid. They've looked pretty stout as a run defensive team. So I I'm optimistic that they're going to be able to at least contain Ollie Gordon, and he's not going to run for 270 like he just did this past week. But I think they're going to be able to keep him under 150 and maybe lower that yards per carry from eight yards per carry in Big 12 play or seven point something on the season you know, to a more reasonable number where it's like four or five yards per carry. Still, that that's enough to hurt you and enough to kill you, but it gives you a better chance to get off the field if you're able to get, get Alan Bowman into some third and long situations where you can then just get after him and, and rush the passer because unlike Jason Bean, Alan Bowman's not a track star. Yeah, he's a capable guy, capable of moving around in the pocket, but he's not someone who's going to kill you with his feet necessarily. Can he run? Sure, he can run a little bit, but he's not the second coming of Jason Bean or John Rice Plumley or some or Will Howard. Uh, name another Big 12 quarterback that can move a little bit. He's not that guy. But so much of the focus is going to be on Ollie Gordon. So you got to still play discipline, disciplined football and remain locked in with your keys in this matchup. Because if you let him get going, it's going to be a really, really long day. That doesn't mean that Oklahoma can't win, even if Ollie Gordon has a big day, but it's just going to make for a much more challenging uh, performance or, or much more challenging situation if Ollie Gordon has a consistent consistent effect on this football game. If you can't contain him at all, it's going to be a bit of a struggle. But I, again, I do think that they're going to be able to do that. But getting Danny Stutzman back is going to be key. What's also, also interesting in this is – what Brent Venable said about Kip Lewis, that if Stutzman's not able to go, that he feels really confident in Kip Lewis and his ability. And I don't have any reason not to uh, also feel confident in Kip Lewis. Kip Lewis has played really good football when he's gotten in the game and had opportunities to play in an extended role. I mean, he was huge on the goal line stop against Texas. He's been huge in spot you know, snaps. He's made a lot of plays in the backfield. He just shows up because of his speed and his athleticism. And he just seems to have a really good understanding of timing and how to dart through the line of scrimmage to get into the backfield and make a play. And, and so that's an encouraging sign. You know, Desan McCullough, I know we don't necessarily, he's not necessarily just a linebacker, but uh, at Cheetah, he's playing really good football right now too. So that gives you some hope that things can bounce back. If Jaron Kanick is able to have a more consistent game and, and not, uh, struggle as much as he did in the tackling department and some of the coverage areas, then I think Oklahoma is going to do okay, even without Stutzman. Now, you're having a drop off in, in experience and talent, and you can't replace what Danny Stutzman brings to the table. But if the competitive depth is better than it was a year ago, then you should be able to mitigate a loss of Danny Stutzman a little bit better and still have a solid outcome against, again, a really, really good run team and a really good team. I mean, this team, this Oklahoma State team is just trending right now. They're trending in a really, really good direction and is going to be a tough team to beat. And I know you don't want to hear that. I know we want to go into Bedlam feeling like Oklahoma is going to conquer the world and and they can go into Stillwater and, and beat little brother one more time before heading off to the SEC. But it's going to be a battle. And Oklahoma State's going to throw everything they have at you, just like Kansas did a week ago. And you got to be ready for it. And you got to be ready to be aggressive too. You can't go on the road into a hostile environment and play passive and conservative football. No, you just can't do it. Not two weeks in a row. You did it against Kansas. You got to go look to take the game by the horns and put your foot on their throat and take this football game. You just can't. You can't go in with a passive mindset. You still have everything in front of you. You still have the opportunity to play for a Big 12 title. And... Despite the loss to Kansas, you still have a bit of a shot to play in the college football playoff. We'll see where Oklahoma stands in the college football playoff rankings, what it means for the Sooners, and what Bedlam's future looks like down the road. We'll talk about all that after the break. Get in on the action this NFL season 
with America's number one sports book, FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 winning bet on the money line. That's $150 if your team wins on a $5 money line bet over at FanDuel. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. Right now, the Oklahoma Sooners sitting at five and a half point favorites over the Oklahoma State Cowboys. The money line over there, minus 250. I mean, if you're feeling a little salty and you want to put you know, $5 down on that plus 202 for Oklahoma State, I, I wouldn't blame you. I mean, with the way Oklahoma's played the last couple of weeks, it's hard necessarily to bet on them and, and that money line as well. But uh, you know, the, the over-under, you're looking at 61 and a half. I could very easily see this game going over that 61 and a half over at FanDuel. So get in on the action right now with America's number one sports book, FanDuel. Again, place any $5 bet on the money line. If it wins, you get $150 back in bonus bets. Easy to use app, wide range of betting options, which includes spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. Go visit FanDuel.com slash locked on with FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. So the initial college football playoff rankings came out on Tuesday night, uh, Halloween night. Ooh, spooky. No, but the Sooners come in at number nine, which coincidentally enough is exactly where I had them over at Sooners Wire and my college football playoff projections. Uh, so very, very interesting that me and the committee, you know, if you need another voter on the committee, I'm happy to to pass, uh, put my name in the hat as well. But uh, this, the, the college football playoff rankings look as such. The Ohio State Buckeyes come in at number one. Again, they were also my number one team simply because I feel like their wins over Penn State and Notre Dame are, are really strong. They're really strong wins. I uh, had Georgia at number two in the, uh, the college football playoff rankings. Michigan came in at number three. The Florida State Seminoles came in at number four. And if you're looking at where you might be able to disagree with some of these rankings, that'd be probably the first place where I might disagree. Florida State's been really, really good this year. They've got a big win over LSU. They've got a big win over Clemson. They've been as good as any team in the nation. They've got good wins, and they're a good team on both sides of the football with a really good quarterback. I'd have them above Michigan simply because of who they played and who they've beaten. That's not to say Michigan's a bad team, but I just haven't seen Michigan play anybody of significance just yet. Now, that'll come. Michigan's going to have some big-time matchups coming ahead of them as they play Penn State and they play Ohio State. And we'll find out a lot more about the Wolverines, not in regard to their uh, cheating allegations and, and scandal that's going on right now. Uh, but then coming in after the Florida State Seminoles, who came in at number four, the Washington Huskies at number five. And there's a team where I, I might consider them above Michigan. In my playoff projections, I had them above Michigan because they got that big win over Oregon. Yeah, it was just a three-point win. But Oregon, a team of substance, a team of signif a significance, that's a strong win. Uh, Washington's looked really, really good this year. And there's no reason why to, you wouldn't necessarily expect them not to make it into the playoff at some point with how good that they've been playing ball. Uh, Oregon came in at number six in the college football playoff rankings. Texas at number seven. Alabama at number eight, which again makes sense. Texas has the head-to-head -head over Alabama. And then the Oklahoma Sooners come in at number nine, just ahead of Ole Miss. Penn State at 11. And the Missouri Tigers at number 12. What I find a little bit fascinating about where Oklahoma landed is you know, sandwiched right between Alabama at number eight and Ole Miss at number 10, two teams that they'll be playing in the 2024 season as part of their SEC conference schedule. Uh, and then Texas at number seven. So it's going to be a very interesting and fascinating uh, first year in the SEC when you have to play Ole Miss and you have to play Alabama and you have to play Texas, three teams that are in the top 10 of the college football playoff rankings right now. But as far as the college football playoff rankings go, I mean, for Oklahoma, the, the task is simple. You just have to win. You got to win all your games and you got to hope for a little bit of help across the country. Because if you have a split decision in the SEC, say Georgia, Alabama, make to the make it to the conference title game, Alabama beats Georgia. It's going to be hard to keep either one of those two teams or both of those teams out of the college football playoff. Or 
Ohio State beats Michigan, and Ohio it, it, that's just only Michigan's loss, or Michigan beats Ohio State, and that's Ohio State's only loss. Is it? Are you going to be able to keep both of those teams out of the playoff? I don't know. And that that's the thing that's fascinating about the college football playoff as a four team because somebody's going to get left out in the cold. And again, for Oklahoma, it just comes down to simply just go win your football games. If you win your football games, you can say you've done your best. At the same time, when you had a winnable game against Kansas and you lost, that hurts you. And it, it hurts your your chances of being in the college football playoff. When the committee spoke about the Texas, Alabama, Oklahoma situation, you know, Texas being in front of Alabama, they had a 10 point win over the Crimson Tide, Oklahoma being two spots behind Texas, even though the Sooners beat them in a head to head with the common opponent situation, Texas has a decisive win over Kansas. The Sooners have a five point loss to the Jayhawks on the ledger. And most recently, so it, it's fair to put the Sooners behind both of those teams, even though Oklahoma beat Texas. But you don't have a whole lot of margin for error. Now, in the greater college football playoff rankings, the Sooners have you know Kansas and they have uh, Oklahoma State that made the top 25 of the college football playoff rankings. So that gives them an opportunity for a couple more quality wins on the schedule. And if they're able to run the table, get to the Big 12 title game, and then either beat Kansas State or Texas, then that gives them an opportunity at another potential top 25 quality win uh, as they go and make their case for being a college football playoff contender. But it all starts this weekend with, with Oklahoma State in Bedlam. If you can't beat Oklahoma State, none of it matters. But if you do beat the Cowboys and have a, a strong showing in the win, then you're going to set yourself up to, to finish the season strong and make a strong case for yourself. But as we talked in the first segment, this Oklahoma State game is not going to be a cakewalk. It, there's no easy, easy answer to this game. You've got to go in with the same level of intensity that you had for Texas, the same focus and determination, the same never say die attitude, the same no quit, the same amount of heart. You've got to play that same way in Bedlam, a much more hostile environment because you're not getting the 50-50 split like you did in the Cotton Bowl. No, you're going into an environment where everybody – in Stillwater, wants to drop the Sooners. They want to see Oklahoma lose one more time in Boone Pickens Stadium to the Cowboys. So you can't be focused on the college football playoff rankings. We got to talk about them because it's news and it's what happens. But for the team and for the fans, it's Oklahoma State. That is the number one priority right now. And we're not going to we're not going to have an, a bedlam. In the future, we don't know what the future holds for Bedlam. We know that it's not on the slate for any year in the near future, any year, 10, 12 years down the road. Uh, however far you want to look at some of the non conference schedules that Oklahoma's got scheduled out right now, there's no Bedlam on it. And we'll talk more about the future of Bedlam here after the break. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. Just like we're so passionate about our football team, we're passionate about our cars and making sure our cars run well and, and look good as they're rolling down the street. So go to eBay Motors. They've got everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Brent Venables was also asked about the future of Bedlam and basically said, I don't really have time to talk about that right now. There's too much to think about. But we know where everybody stands on this. The Oklahoma State contingent, they're content to not consider Bedlam for the future. They're content to not have Oklahoma on the schedule, which 
I get it. I get from you know a historical perspective, Oklahoma State's not fared well in the series. The Oklahoma Sooners have dominated it. Uh, and yeah, they've, they've got a win as recently as 2021. But I can understand why you wouldn't want to necessarily put a game like that that's going to be a coin flip and one that has big time in-state and regional recruiting implications. Uh, that's kind of part of it. I mean, you don't want to go in – and lose a game to Oklahoma and continue to give Oklahoma all the momentum in the regional recruiting. No, you want to, you want to be able to say, Hey, we got the last one on Oklahoma and that's it. If they're able to win this weekend, that is, but I still stand by the idea that it's a shame that right now we don't have a plan for Bedlam in the future. And I get conference, non-conference schedules. They're scheduled so far out that they're hard to replace. Blah, 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 blah. You can make things happen. Schedules change all the time. You can drop a non-conference. You can, you know, buy out a non-conference game. You can negotiate with the Sooners to, to figure this out. There are very smart, highly qualified individuals that have great problem-solving capabilities in Joe Castiglione, Joseph Harris at Oklahoma, the Oklahoma State contingent. Uh, Casey Shrum, and I can't remember Oklahoma State's AD right now. My apologies. Um, Chad something? I, I don't know. But you could figure it out. And for Oklahoma State, I get that they don't aren't, net, aren't itching and chomping at the bit to play this game. I totally get it. But at the same time, if you want to be a powerhouse, you got to play the powerhouse. You got to play your in-state foe. You got to play a game that's going to move the needle nationally and move the needle locally. I've talked about the financial implications of it, you know, and I don't know what the numbers would be, but I got to, I got to believe that not having Bedlam in Stillwater every other year is going to have a local economic impact because how easy is it for Oklahoma fans to travel to Stillwater? It's super easy. It doesn't take any time at all. It's just a quick jaunt up 35 and you get there in no time. But you're not going to have that. You're not going to have Sooners fans descending on Stillwater to go to restaurants and bars and, and come to the stadium and you know pay for parking and use concession and all that jazz. No, you're going to be 100% reliant on you know Big 12 fan bases traveling to Stillwater and, and using that ticket allotment. And they probably will. But will they have the same energy and the same passion and the same excitement in Stillwater as Sooners fans do, I don't imagine that's going to be the case. And with that that passion, that excitement, that energy that travels comes money and, and spending. And that's not to say that other fan bases don't have money. It just means that when you're the more excited you get, the more likely you are to spend some money and you know buy extra drinks, buy extra food. You know, instead of getting one app for the table, you get two or three apps for the table because you're just feeling it. You're excited that you're in Stillwater for Bedlam and you're just going to you're going to throw it down. You're going to tailgate. You're going to be out there. The, the environment's going to be different. I mean, that's going to be a college game day, big noon kickoff type atmosphere in the future whenever Bedlam returns, just like it did whenever, you know, Oklahoma went to Nebraska and it was a big, big deal. And, and Nebraska came to Norman. It was a huge deal. That was a game that had been played forever and then went away because of conference realignment. Now, it may take 10 years before Oklahoma State and Oklahoma get back on the schedule with each other. But it's going to be a worthwhile time because it's a necessary game. I know Oklahoma fans don't consider it a rivalry at the same level of Texas. And I get that. And, and I don't either. At the same time, it is a rivalry. It is a game that matters to the state of Oklahoma. It's a game that matters locally. And it's a game that you want to have on your schedule because it does move the needle with advertisers. It's going to move the needle with the networks. And when they can sell Bedlam, they can sell it as a rivalry. It's going to get more people tuned in to watch. I mean, this game is, it was electric in 2021. That night atmosphere where, you know, it was, a back and forth battle coming down to the wire, the final play. It was an incredible game. If you're a neutral, you know, a neutral observer, you love that game. It was so much fun to watch. If you're a Sooners fan, it was super frustrating. The, the last uh, few plays of that game, 
where you're watching Caleb Williams throw jump balls to Trayvon West, five uh, ten Trayvon West uh, in the end zone, and it's not coming up, and you're not getting the flag that you need. But anyway, I, I hope that cooler heads will prevail, and in the next few years, there's a plan to get Bedlam back on the schedule every year, because like Clemson in South Carolina, like Miami in Florida, or Florida State in Florida, or you know pick a non-conference matchup that plays every year and that there you go that's all you need to know there are several non-conference matchups that play every single year and are going to continue to play every single year clemson south carolina is not going anywhere florida florida state's not going anywhere so get this game back on the schedule or florida miami i'm not sure which one of those plays every year there's one of them that plays every year and the other one that doesn't but get this game back on the schedule get it there as quickly as you can because this is going to be this is a fun week Everybody's pumped about this week. The talk is excited. Everybody, like, this is a big time matchup that has Big 12 title implications on the line. And we're still a month away from the Big 12 title game. So let's get on it. Let's get this thing back on the schedule because down the road, it's going to have college football playoff implications. And that will make it even more exciting. That's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Sooners. Thanks so much for tuning in and being a part of the show. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. We're free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button and that notification bell to let you know when new episodes drop. Follow my man Josh on Twitter at Josh on Ref here on Monday through Friday from 9 to noon on the KREF Sports app. Follow me on Twitter at John Nine Williams. And you can read my work covering the Sooners over at the Sooners Wire as well. Uh, that's going to do it. Until next time, for Josh Helmer, I'm John Williams. Boomer Sooner.